Okay. Well, welcome one and all to uh, the uh, the August uh, version of Planet Poetry 28, the only one that I know of that's on Zoom, the only poetry event where everybody shares uh, their screen and shows their poem, uh, the craft of their poem as they perform their poem. So we have the advantage of seeing it, getting into the guts of it, reading along and and uh, and enjoying the performance of the poet. And today we have uh, uh, poets from around the world that we'll be reading as we always do. It's on YouTube. Uh, if you want to follow us, uh, channel poetry, Planet Poetry 28. Uh, as far as that, uh, as far as the timing is concerned, there's no, uh, there's a limit of like five or six minutes, you know, four or five or six minutes to be fair to others. And we all know uh, how that kind of feels when somebody's going on very extraneously and and all the rest. So we respect each other, we respect the time, and I, I've never had a problem with that, of course, but something one to, you have to mention. So generally what I do is I start, break the ice. I have just one uh, poem I'm going to read today. It's a, a, something, it's an event that happened to me here at this place uh, last month, and it took me a while to finally figure out how to write about it. It's called The Night of the One Star. And it starts with a uh, an epigram from a, a quote from a friend of mine, a poet who is a mystical poet, a translator of Rumi. And he said, you cannot plan your enlightenment. It just happens. Well, is it possible to make it any bigger? I certainly can. Thank you, Lee. Oh, a little too big. Yeah. I'll go down a little bit. There we go. Even I'm not that myopic. That, that's perfect for me. I didn't know anybody else. There we go. That's fine. I can do that. I was at my son's weekend retreat, sojourn for the, from the sweltering season in Chicago's concrete and humidity, for reverie in Michigan's farmland greens. This place we call Grateful House. It is the furthest farm on a dead end road where generations plowed their grapes and wheat, where we grow our plentiful gardens feast. Content, I watch the sun curl to the horizon of sapphire blue like a sheetrock wall, empty of every bird, moon or cloud, as I lay on a hammock and waited for the stars. None were forthcoming. In slow minutes, the pastel palette deepened into a motionless sea of darkness until the universe was blindfolded into black. Such an evening as this I could not recall without a speck of star or planet above when by now the heavens should have lit with the bright veil of the Milky Way. A blinking red dot from a far distant plane disappeared like a firefly and I felt cast away from creation, which closed its mind to the idea of light. By the, but the air was fragrant from the fullness of summer, and I rocked myself into a dreamless sleep, an awkward silence in a coffin of night, into the deepest hours of forgetting. I awoke, a lone star greeted me above, a pin glowed in the desert of the universe, I stared at it and it at me. It seemed to breathe and I shook in terror. Is this the call of death? My heart beat like a chaotic drum and there was a stillness in my breath. The black sky was just a place where salvation was a wall of emptiness. No, there was this glowing beam, one star alone and abandoned, come to shield me of despair and rage. All that accompanies advancing years to that eternity that awaits us all. No, I will see it in its radiance when that moment arrives from my passing in a miraculous final acceptance. I was in its spell for what seemed a lifetime, living in the memories of days and, and decades. Yes, I, I have seen the world. I have known love. I should not feel cheated, but filled with grace for all the contentment, communions, and miracles from the beauty of human tears. Then quite suddenly, a thousand stars appeared like distant headlights reflecting on the vast arc of sky, and a half moon rushed into bloom as the clouds took shape to bless the aura from the first rays of morning. 
I who believed in nothing beyond my senses, curse my fate and the fate of everything. I'll never find deliverance, will ever find deliverance in that solitary star, a sneak preview of the abundance to come. And that was my experience. Thank you for letting me share that. Very emotional experience I had. Indeed. You read that really beautifully. I really felt that one. Oh, thank you so much, Lee. I appreciate I mean, that. I've been taking lessons from Lacan and Laura and others. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely, Naima. Just, just send it to email it to me uh, if you have my email address. If not, I'll put it in the chat and then I'll just put it right on an attachment. And Laura, why don't you read next and then Lacan and then um, I'll, re I'll po post Lee's poem and we'll take it from there and just as we continue to grow in numbers. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let me share this. It's wonderful to be here. Let me find where it is. Yes, I think it's here. <laughs> okay, coming to, to you tonight from Austria near the Czech border. And I picked two pieces that are a little lighter um, because my life's been sort of heavy for a while and uh, so I hope you enjoy these. The first one is called Pursuit and it is after a poem by E.E. E. Cummings. I carry your eyebrows that are highbrows, that are love, that are looks, that are in me like the many paintings on your wall. Everywhere they follow me, giving me sighs and a rise to the birds in my chest that are your determination that fly me to the skies. I carry your eyebrows as my armor on my back thick and bushy, up that canyon, riding horse track, cross the prairie. Mile high blue skies and panhandle grasses brush my thighs, for grandmothers grow in strange places. Bareback whinnies are my pride. I carry your allows and holy cows that are soft, that are sown, in my pockets, in the sockets of blood and flesh and trumpet that spit and souse your meaning and your gleaning, climbing cliffs and gambling ships and running from the law, running to the word, dropping finery and flaw. I carry your highbrows and deepest crevices. No one knows I've got these ties deep in heart and veins and ganglia. In the city of New Orleans, in the ladies book club, in your burnt orange car. Southern bells are not all Southern. The Western star leads me afar to your perch upon the moon jar. I carry you, carry you in my heart as you ride tides across the prairie and I come galloping in hot pursuit. Thank you. That one was actually inspired by a grandmother, <laughs> very much an individual. Um, <laughs> wow! Like, one breathless. of the one of the only two Democrats in uh, in a certain county in Northwest Texas. So <laughs> this, this next one was inspired by, believe it or not, a visit to a laundrette or laundromat. I don't know which word you might know or use in the city of Savannah, Georgia, earlier in 2023, when I went to visit some family there who now live there. So, um, 
You never know what you'll be inspired to write. This is called O Spin City. O Spin City, you blossoming nest of washing machines, riding the tide of gain, of aerial, the tide of snacks, of Coca-Cola, Mountain Dew, M&Ms, Reese's Pieces. Step right up, get a card. Step two, put clothes in wash. Step three, press start. Watch the cowboy in a black hat with a butterfly on his back smile at drier nymphs who wash hotel linen with such elegance. Like a wedding party in white sits at the beginning before the sinning. Step right up, get detergent. Step two, pour tide of life. Step three, add bleach and watch Clorox do a detox on the stains of strife. While the lanes of damp clothes tap dance across the road like a line of geese headed south. Oh, Spin City, you shining silver chest of revolving hope, resolving our soiled leavings with the tide of Maine, the tide of might, of human hands that fold, of metal wombs that hold, our throes, our gross, our night clothes, our day clothes, our disclothes, our very shadows. That do suppose to transpose by spin and turn and expose even our work clothes into sweetest fragrant windrows but don't try this with pantyhose. Oh, Spin City, my pretty kitty, churning and turning, wet and dry, the heavy fabric of the skies, the moaning, groaning rhythm of the sighs, while we watch the clock and then our socks splosh and closh and flosh and buy more time in form of metaphoric M&Ms and crystal cascades of cola our spiritualized snacks, balanced like sweet, silly babies on our thighs. Thank you. Let's see. Oops. Mm. Wow. Have I, have I stopped the share? I got no. it. I got it. It's okay. Yeah. Hi. Wow. Be good. <laughs> I'm just... Uh, I'm just speechless. Uh, you know, I wonder, you, you besides the, the actual work, you perform them so well. And I'm wondering what it'd be, what it'd be like to show the poem to somebody and have them read it. I just, because I think it, it's got such amazing power in it. It's like, wow, it's just, it, meant, it feels like it wants to be read aloud, but you do it so well. Well, the Thank stuff you. in there is so dense you can you can follow it. I was just like I was like caught on every word, just like following right along. <laughs> a curse of following your every word. Very, yeah, really wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Well, thank you very much. Well, lucky, lucky me. I get to see that again and again and again. There you go. And I'm sure it's going to be a lot of that today with the poets that have uh, assembled here. <laughs> thank you. That's wonderful. And then next, from um, far away from here. On the other side of the planet in, in Manila is my friend uh, Lacan. Good, 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 good deep morning to you. <laughs> <laughs> deep morning. <laughs> well, it's almost sunrise here. Uh, magandang umaga. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Lacan and I am based in Manila, Filipinas, or in English, the Philippines. And I am from the Porta Global Network. And I have three poems for today. And I will share screen them now. <laughs> yeah, it's been three years and it's still like, where's that button again? There we go. So I have three poems. First one is called Whole Way. I will zoom it. There we go. <clears throat> Whole Way. There she was. Every, every bit of a lady I wanted to marry, someday, became never. 
As her body shifted to face me, I saw a dream. The replays and hidden seconds that kept me staring, holding me like an exemption. As my six-year-old body was nothing more than a number on a plaid shirt that wore me. As I tried to smile at her, I do miss her. She missed a year of me already. All she had were those eyes. The question from her lawyer, who is that? Her reply filled my leather shoes black as her abandonment, whipping me like an unwanted breathing I was denied to a limbo in the corridor without any doors to hide my innocence who just wanted to see his mother. And all I had was an answer that shaped my mouth like a widow, window where how lived why was stuck with a childhood that would never leave that hallway in the coffin-shaped city hall of Manila? Thank you. Second poem, looking at a window. My eyes were still open in a dim hospital room perusing the hope in the shadows of a woman I've been holding. The counting evening of a May, I looked at the window. The night became less dead. As the sun rose to the chest of my grandmother, like a fulgur of cancer still hanging on a skin, a shade lower than the dawn. I watched her complexion, brightened with invisible seconds, ticking away the chances God could deny us after an even tide of praying as her hands, still unperturbed, sits on the daylight of pulses falling in her veins just as the day breaks, a holy number. Life cracks the screams of death as it enters the morning like a penitent hue of mourning, glow of my tears away. The cadaver of time used to be love. Now closed by a horizon glowing on an unending screen, a flat sunup unfolds under a sheet of abandonment, slipping, covering away the hidden colorless goodbye of an extinguished firefly, alighting the morn of looking at missing. Thank you. Final piece. <laughs> mm. Oh, okay. Um, I I I wrote this for Tupelo Press um last year, um almost a, a year ago. Um, if you want to have fun with this particular piece that I did for Tupelo, so, and, you you know some of the titles <laughs> that I incorporated. It's called you. I know grief waits in the last corner of May, listening to carpenters springing the nails in a coffin buried in years already. No one gets over death when it's close to you. Losing my superstar, I've said goodbye to love. That love of rainy days and Mondays, silence. It's a kind of hush. Only yesterday can remind my sweet, sweet smile. It's a solitude of a masquerade that collects my tears like Mr. Postman would. Wanting to be close to you with each memory parceled, we've only just begun. Recollecting lament. It meant that the end of the world is a ticket to ride misery. Every time I say I can't last a day without you. Sadly, I do. Jambalaya of existing is just a sad reminiscing. I'm caught between goodbye and I love you. The crescent noon is a reason to believe now I'm a desperado. All of my life, I'm a piano picker. 
unable to leave yesterday behind for free. It's going to take some time. Be close to you. Embrace your melodies. Someday, for all we know, all you get from love is a love song. And we're all singing, even when we're still hurting. Have you sang those songs too? Or have they sang you? Thank you. Maraming salamat. Oh, well, take a while to get the smile off my face with all that. <laughs> it's so good. But anyway, thank you very much. Wow. I mean, for the first two poems, you know, and, and that, and the childhood and, and grandma and all that, I mean, wow, uh, it's just amazing. And the last poem as well, it's a lot of, it's just no, it's so nice to follow as you, as you, as you, how you write it and as you perform it. It's really a gift. Thank you. Well, well, I'm going to share um, Lee's poem next. Lee, I don't know if everybody here knows you. Um, if not, do you want to? I, I, I know you're you're uh, you're living in 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 Europe. I know. But are you in, in England? In England, yes. Yeah. On the south coast of England. Great. Yeah. Um. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, um, yes, my name is Leah Lane. I'm, uh, um, I, know, I know you're a good, and I know you're, a, I, I, I've met you, I've seen some of your poems and heard your poetry, and I know we're in for a treat, so here, um, here's the poem that you sent me. Yes, <laughs> to, you said, right. Can you see it? Can you see it okay? Uh, yes, I'm can not going to try to read from there, but, uh, uh it, it's oh, quite perfect. I'll, I'll scroll yeah, from you, yeah, okay. Background, I mean, I've done lots of things i've uh, um uh worked as a writer mainly as a journalist i've uh written political speeches i've written books on art and culture like that and um and um i've designed computer programs i basically uh, i've done all kinds of things and um i sort of uh, secretly write that that's a life that's a life well spent <laughs> <laughs> yes well you know i mean i came out of university having the english um, art history and philosophy and was told i was um not qualified for anything <laughs> welcome to the club Enjoy. Yeah, so, uh, so anyway this is this poem is called the hunger ball i was asked to write um something for the poetry against uh, hunger website and um I couldn't actually think of hunger out of the context of what causes it, um, which is usually something that we do, um, uh, whether it's war or destroying the environment or whatever. So um, this is called the hunger ball. And um, it's, I've only just finished it, so it's got a few rough edges. So hopefully if, uh, reading through it a few times will, will help me smooth them out. The Hunger Ball. Famine loves his sister drought, whispers in the sand, holds tight her hand as she walks out. She cannot see or hear a field. Men roll the dice, spin the wheel, always the arrow, never the bow. Drags slow her skirt across the land, wilts the barley and the rye, vultures soar and fate's command. Hunger soon will claim us all, cattle fall and buzzards fly. There is no law except survival. Sing loud the song of Cain of Abel. Mother's breasts run dry. The hand that rocks the cradle. Now barren as the barren land. No bread upon the table. Famine heeds his sister's call, strides fast the withered land. A hunger ball he must prepare. Cards are dealt and wheels are spun. The banquet ball prepared. Starvation stalks the marriage bed, mounts each bride to bless, each hungry guest his gown caress, the spousal dance begun. Resplendent in her wedding dress, behold the virgin bride, the withered rose to bind her head, the marriage band so near at hand, the human tide parade, 
Dead widows haunt the slaughter ground, surround the orphan maid. The fatal kiss not on her cheek. Her bridal dance delayed. Daughter of the blistered earth, belly full of sand, the land now drowned of hope and mirth, not worth the oil that she can't eat, no deliverance at hand. The banker and the, Ar the Arab king counted silver, counting gold, scarce behold or even care that famine's pride will soon be wet, the spousal ring to wear. Do their gods command that she eat sand, swallow dirt and swallow stone, feels a turn to blood and dust, the rich won't say what the rich don't own. Night has come to steal the sun. The killing floor she walks alone. Her only choice to starve or run. Run as fast as she is able. Heed the jackal's roar. Dream a dream of hope and fable. Hunger is her only sin. Seek shelter on a foreign shore. Sweet daughter of the fertile band, belly full of corn, frail sister from a blistered land, fleeing famine, fleeing war, unto us a child is born. Stay your eyes upon the shore. She comes in sorrow, comes in hope, not to borrow, not to steal, feel her breath soft on your cheek, the stranger in the land of fable, her back pressed hard against the wheel. She bleeds the blood, all sisters bleed, heed her warning call, Will you make her welcome at your table? Your God have mercy on her soul. Tender flesh and brittle bone. All she's asking is a chance to clasp a sister by the hand and dance the harvest home. Not my sister, not my kin, not like me, she can't come in. Sowers reap what they have sown. Hunger is a mortal sin. What's mine is mine and mine alone. Her bridal gown I will not wear. The spouse a ring not mine to own. No withered roses for my hair. God hates the poor for being weak. So bind her tight with greed and lies. Still her mouth, close her eyes. Cries unheard if she can't speak. Tomorrow's dream is in the sand. I hear the jackal call. Famine stalks my fertile land, prepares the hunger ball. Eagles glide on broken wing, the spousal band climb on my hand. Blackbirds lose the will to sing. Boats loosen on the stable door. Horsemen sniff the air. Resplendent in my wedding dress, I stroll the killing floor. The slaughter ground is all around, dead roses bind my hair. The veil of truth grows ever thin. I watch it as it frays. Hunger comes, not if, but when. The rule of men has cursed us all. His greed the earth betrays. The mares of night my lips caress. False prophets sing my praise. Starvation mounts my wedding bed. Our marriage bands proclaim. The bleeding moon. Sleeps in my hand. All hail the end of days. Thank you. Oh, it's a little, wow. I have to give it a symposium on how to work, how to show a modern meter. In in uh, in in our times, I put you. I mean, that was amazing. The re, not only all that, but the uh, the the meter and the the drive of, of of the sound of those words. You created that that rhythm that you constantly surprised us with, like Mozart. I mean, it was really a, a wonderful, the sounding poem as well as what went into it. That was my first impression of it. You're a masterful reader as well. What's wonderful? Sorry, wow. I, yeah. Well, thank you. I mean, I, uh, I hopefully I'll read it better the next couple of times. I'm still uh, getting familiar with, with it. No, it has an extraordinary uh, metrical variation, and it's just it's 
As you, I'm expecting you go up and you go down. Da da da, you go da da da. I can't, it was just perfect. It just absolutely kept me on edge. A lot of tension in, in the way you produce that, the, all your enjambments and all. Well, congratulations to the first uh, three poets. Uh, I know everybody here is amazing. So this is going to just keep going on. <laughs> Thank you very much for sharing that and for allowing me to, uh, to have that as part of the library, believe me. It's great. We'll see how it all ends out before it hits the uh, the anthologies, you know, of American poetry in the 21st century. <laughs> we hope so. Uh, why don't you, how about if we have a, a Sueta, could you, would you, you care to read next? And then uh, Nima, the way I see you on my screen, then Os Osana, hi, welcome back. And uh, the last, and I see, uh, and Martin, and then uh, LA, L LA, is that, is that how, how can I uh, call you? Uh, La, la rabat, la rabat. <laughs> okay, when you come back. Lynette, okay, Lynette, welcome. Are we on mute or is that, is, we see anything, so. Ah, no, I'm on mute. I, I hope oh, you're gosh. able to see the screen. Ah. Yes, yes, we are. Right. Uh, I'm still distracted, or rather I should say I'm still absorbed in what Lee read. <laughs> so sorry. Yeah, okay. So, um, so this one is called A Woman's Guide to Meditation. Inhale. It is cold. Hold. It is cold. Exhale. I feel a draft. Inhale. I should get up and close the door. My neck is stiff. My back is stiff. The floor is cold. Hold. Will there be the next season of Bridgerton? Who will be in love with whom? I wish I could get into one of their dresses and whip up a fancy hairdo. Exhale. Need a haircut. Should book an appointment. Last time the hairdresser suggested retouching the roots. I'm quite grey. Should I even bother? I look my age. My back does not let me forget. I need to buy that paint oin pain ointment I saw in the commercial. Inhale. Almost out of pads. I'm late by a week. Is it menopause? Am I not too young for the bleeding to stop? That should explain the moods. How I wanted to strangle him before the boss finished his joke, that mesogynous asshole. I can't feel my feet. Let me wiggle my toe. Oh, no, it's numb. There isn't anything like comfortably numb. It's always uncomfortable. Pink Floyd didn't have women in the band. Nothing's like classic rock. The junk my boy likes would disappear sooner than he could learn the lines. Don't I sound like Papa? By the way, it's, it'll be his birthday. We'll bake the semolina cake I made last Diwali, seasoned with rose water and cardamom. Hold. Haven't called mom, we'll do it after this session. She asked me to visit her Cairo. Let me take her out for lunch. How slow she has become, and still she won't let me help. Asked her to meditate to bring down her pressure, but she never listens. Her brain's too busy to be thoughtless, she says. She thinks of things to cook, grocery list, a hundred chores, with her eyes closed, can't blame her. It's always a lot to manage alone. I'm grateful I have the time to contemplate before I begin the day. I can observe my breath as I inhale, hold, and exhale. <sighs> Did I un unload the laundry? What do I cook for lunch? Rice and beans and some greens. Let me not forget mint chutney and yogurt. I'm still cold. I should have closed the damn door. That's the one. I could go with another one. It's called Handmade Clouds. I look out at the clouds. When we go on drives, I collect them on my phone. I try making them with crayons, pastels, acrylics, and oil. I fail in every medium. I never aspire for the multi-tiered ones from Michelangelo's ceiling that contain a white-headed god or the mysterious symmetry from Marguerite's skies spewing out men in hats. I want the usual riffraff, the candy floss lumps that change with the wind and hold sunlight and drop like your hair that feels like nothing and everything on my skin. But my clouds are fat, flat amoebas, 
uninspired unicells who refuse to grow into complex souls. They would rather inhabit a child's book than a museum. How do I make clouds, I finally ask in exasperation. Stick shadows down their bums, you answer, spitting out your gum. Wow. Well, what a unique way of presenting this, this collage of believable moments through your subconscious. Mm. <laughs> Wonderful. What a lot of energy and, and read with that kind of energy. And, and the way you kind of split it up into that prose moments is very, very unique. It's really nice to, to, to be able to read along. There's just so much stuff, so dense. But it's, uh, you know, each one follows the next, you know. Driving the chain. That's great stuff. Very unique poetry here tonight by everybody. Very unique. That's just wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> blah, blah. Well, hi. I so I have Naima, then uh, Os uh, uh, Oksana, then uh, Martin, and then and then uh, Lynette. So uh, that's just wonderful. Moving on. Hi, Naima. It's nice to to join us here. I, you're um, also you're, you're also in the UK, like like Lee is, are you not? Yes, I am. Um, I haven't got your email, so I couldn't send you the link. For oh, I'm sorry. I was, I'm my bad. Uh, I was put in the chat for you right now, and then we'll just move on. We'll come right back to you. Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, so, Oksana, are you, are you ready? um sorry i'm here um well i can try i don't know if i'm going to be able to share from my phone i could try uh if not then just send it to me like um uh like naima is and it'll be, there'll be no problem i can try okay, let me okay. see yeah try yeah try it yeah sure okay hi everyone <laughs> i know i'm kind of um let me see here i don't know i never used it like this so i don't know while i use the laptop because I try to get in from the laptop, it won't let me. So I said, let me try my phone. So really, who, what, what do you mean? Yeah, I don't know. I tried it like sometimes it's like that. I don't know. It's weird, like the laptop. Oh, I, oh I'm just hoping that it wasn't uh, because um, uh, the was, event bright wasn't working properly. Yeah, or it's not gonna let me. I don't want to take any one space, so I'll just try to see if I can. Sure. Let me. What, what I'll do is. Um... Hi Chris, let, how are you doing? Yeah, well, I'll send you one. I'll send you my email address like I just did to Nimer and just email it to me. Awesome, thank you. Sure, thank I'll let you. somebody else go though, so we won't lose. Sure, them. Martin, are you okay to go? And welcome, Chris, Christopher George, from Baltimore. Hello, Mark. Sorry about that. I just realized. That I'm trying to juggle too many things. I just logged in on the computer so I can share the screen. Sure. Let me see. Let me go fix something here real quick. <laughs> Sorry. I was thinking I'd have a little more time. And get you to just get this like this. Not like that. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> Okay, so this is one I from my notes I've actually shared a little while here here a little while back, but uh, the person I wrote it about birthday was yesterday, so I thought I'd share it again. I haven't shared it anywhere else for a while. This is called Becky. So Johnny asked if he could ask if Karen cared our club to join, which we had fun making logos for like spot hats adorned with a star or a coin. And I said, sure, but the only way that she would join is if Becky could too. So that's how the four of us came to hang out. At recess each day, we found lots to do, like singing or playing at make-believe, that we were explorers discovering jewels, or claiming popular victories where we were the heroes bending the rules. One day, she let her pigtails down and swept her hair all over to the right, enhancing my dreams that she'd give me a kiss each day before we'd head home for the night. Then over the summer, she grew more than an inch and called me a shrimp when we got back from break that tore 
the four of us still were inseparable, though. So one day, I an invitation I'd make and ask her to dinner my parents prepared while we would mime the keys in the air to tunes coming out of the stereo set like she did for real on the stage with flair. I finally got her to give me a kiss, a peck on the lips when no one could see, then spoiled it by saying I thought we should wed. While shyly she said she might not agree. And now she shares posts about her four kids and news of a granddaughter I'm glad to hear. Our lives having taken quite different paths. She's doing so well after many a year. So that was for my fourth and fifth grade girlfriend, <laughs> who obviously moved in a different path than I did. But I, I just got a message back from her saying, thanks for the both birthday greetings on Facebook. So that's cool. <laughs> um, since I'm sharing the screen, I thought I'd share some of my sort of shape poetry that I haven't shared for a while. This is, I'm not sure what to call this one. <laughs> Sometimes just call it golden black. Golden black yellow jackets like a maze of swirling rooms that curl in ways I can't assume will stay the same. I stare amused as on they move. Is this insane? I don't know who's been building these fantastic scenes of checkered rooms that light the gloom of thwarted sleep. This is another one about uh, turning the light out. Black hole where light once stood gives birth to stellar ring around it, sending out ripples of purple green glowing which shatter into popcorn patches stuttering away. Walls begin to phosphoresce as shadows slowly start to fade. So faintly reappear, desk, window, bookshelf, bed. And then this is the last one I have today, I think. Slides great. Subtle flame flickers in a corner of the room, like my eyelids so heavy with silvery sleep which somehow though cannot hold all the light out as the flame flickers on in the corner of my eye, in a corner of my mind, like the tears and the smiles I remember still. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's so wonderful. Can you hear me? Yes, that's that's great. I always like I always like looking at how you construct your poems, Martin, as well. It's a treat. Thank you. Uh, and I hope we have a long time before you write my epigraph, but I want you to be the one to write it. <laughs> well, that wasn't actually an elegy this time. But, uh, an elegy. <laughs> she's still around. I talked to her on Facebook yesterday. But, uh, I've heard of many of your elegies in the past, <laughs> sure. Uh, sure, hi, uh, I'm having a little problems, uh, Naima, with uh, getting your email through. I don't know why it's like coming in at, at, at Gmail, then I can't open anything. Uh, could you just send it as a Word document? Word document. Okay, yeah, I'll do that now. Okay, that would be easier enough. And uh, yeah, wait while I'm waiting for Os uh, Osana, if you're, have you sent me? I haven't seen it yet, but uh, if that's the case, I guess we'll have our later entering. Chris, you missed some amazing poetry here tonight. So far, you have to uh, you have to go and see this on you on, on YouTube. You won't believe it. Everybody who's read so far has just been off the charts, and uh, more to come, I'm sure. So now here's your turn. <laughs> I sent it, Mark. I just sent it right. Okay, I'll get it in a sec. Meanwhile, uh, Chris, let, then take the yeah, go ahead. I have just come home from the road. I was having trouble with my internet uh, connection. No a few problem. minutes ago, and I'm trying to finalize something, and then I'll be ready in 15 minutes, something like that. Okay, well, thanks for joining, Chris. Right, always as always. Thank you. Okay, so let me uh, let, let me see if I have something in the email here. Oh, Lynette, are you ready? There you go. 
I'm sorry, you were blocked off the screen. And I just forgot there for a second there. There you go. You're on mute, by the way. Yeah, I'm just here navigating a couple things. Good day, good day from the Virgin Islands. So I'm going to make sure that I choose the correct thing to share today. Share. Okay, here we go. So I'm sharing two poems today. The first one is called, I am an anomaly. I am an anomaly. I didn't ask to be, but I represent a dichotomy, a perfect imperfection left to stand alone. And not even a drone can guide me home because I have none. I stand hapless, hopeless, stateless, unable to match a definition while the melanin stirs the soul and the plasma carries the truth, the history of these roots. But I lace up my boots and I shout in silence because I choose not to be defiant because I am an anomaly that I didn't choose to be. And I can't let my fruits suffer for the deeds of me. So that's my first poem. If I click up here. Okay. Oh, there we go. So the second poem is a very short one. It's called, Do You Love What You Feel? Do you love what you feel? Because your feelings no one can steal. What's inside is what's real. You're you that you can't conceal. Your inner beauty, you must reveal, even if you feel a shade of teal, even when someone gives you a bad deal. Take courage and grab the wheel and let the negativity be peeled because you've got natural appeal. Erase the hurt and heal and just love what you feel. Thank you. That was that was lovely. That's wonderful. Where are you from? Where are you writing from? I'm from the Virgin Islands. I was born in St. Thomas, the U.S. Virgin Islands, but I live in the British Virgin Islands. Indeed. No, your poetry has a very directness. It's very lovely, and you 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 sound very nicely, also, and and repetition, as well. And repetition is so important in poetry. Especially, you know, in, in, as you as you use it. So, congratulations and thanks for joining us. Really, sure. Well, okay, I have your poem now, Naima, and I'm going to put it on for you. Uh, the uh, the road, yes. Okay. Sorry. I had to blow yours up. I'm just take a second here. Back to full screen. Thank you for your patience. There you go. Can you see it? Okay. Uh, Naima, are you are you on? Sorry, I'm still on mute. Yeah, yeah, I can see go. it. Okay, yeah, okay. okay, marvelous. Thank you. Thank you. The road to Mazuga, leaving and ascending, weaving and bending. La ilaha illallah echoes from afar. The squat palm trees that sprout green feathered fountains, the dug trenches, and abandoned tools on the floor as arduous labor stops to heed the call of Zor. An aqua sky serenely welcomes formidable mountains, a mechanical beetle rising and falling, Amazir colors flicker past the eye, a patchwork of the fruitful and bone dry, lethargic dogs in the shade blissfully snoring, the simmering streets of Wurzezet, fresh water streams in Aitpen Heddor. Dady's Gorge, in the valley we dally, flanked by clay monoliths, 
clear water gushes from its seat and we lean in to wet our lips. Still the road ahead pushes into a horizon of gold and brilliant blue. The sun sheer simmer like a delicate bridal veil, delicately complimenting her fiery stare without singe or tear, blushing gold and opaque, trailing into the braised air. The groom in an indigo headdress waits by the aisle. Rotund women in billowing cotton robes with small children wind through parched fields where relentless life still yields tufts of dehydrated defiance, barren brown and evergreen. An intrepid explorer relinquishing the hours and the days, forging through the rock and the dust, the temperature stewing life's lust, postcards of natural splendor bathed in sumptuous rays. In the desert, shadows of camels and their passengers accompany us to camp, sprouting emerald where life still flowers and the black beetles scurry and scour for droppings where quad bikes and jeeps leave swirling patterned stamps. The silhouettes who stretch out to greet the setting sun as the camp tents Welcome the heat-glazed caravan. Fed and watered, we laze by the campfire's glowing hum, dancing obliviously to the derbuga and the guitar's strum. And the night has a thousand eyes, all blinking and winking. The flames rise into the blackness like orange tongues. The minty pours freely and brings a taste that belongs. The mind lets go of the stresses that keep us sinking. I dived into the desert surrounded by dunes, ripples, farther than the eye can see, shimmying into infinity. I gazed into the eye and she gazed gloriously back into me, a serene, tranquil sea washing away wrecks ruin, living and thriving releasing and arriving. The magic of Sahara's sweep lays me softer, lighter to sleep. Thank you. Huh. Well, I'm gonna look at that again. If you could, the, uh, you know, as I was, I've seen you read some several times before, I've heard you read several times before, the first time I've seen your poetry. And uh, I don't catch all those amazing slant rhymes and uh, and li and line uh, and rhyme variations that you use as much. When you see it, it's like wow, it's quite impressive. Uh, they've crafted in such a fashion to have so subtly used all all those devices so well in line. Uh, so it's a treat to uh, to see your poem. Thank you very much for sharing that. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Wow. Well, uh, let me move on to Osaka. That was just great, Naomi. Mean, thank you. What a what a night. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, oh, I have to pick it up. Um, can you can you go, Chris? Are you ready to go? As the next to last reader, everybody's read through kind of once. So, if so, as I go back to get. Uh, you know, I actually am ready. How about that? Make it so, and I'll have and I'll have uh, uh, Sana's poem open a split second. I don't want to take your time. Are we ready? Yes. I'm ready. Okay. Make it so. All right. Let me uh, pull up my presentation. Let me find the uh, right one. Okay. Let me begin with a couple of poems by Eldon Luce. I have not met this gentleman. He's uh, an elderly guy uh, from California, but I've been, been enjoying his work on the internet, specifically on Facebook, uh, and um, have often complimented him. Uh, fathers and fathers before, fathers and fathers before, and so it goes for all generations. Not really a poem, but a gentle thought. 
I thought about my father and how honoured I am to have such a man alive in me still and in everyone he touched. In the mirror behind my eyes, I still find him solid, smiling, and a man of his times. Another one by Eldon Luce. For yours and mine, to hear, I'm sorry, here to bear witness to a story through my eyes, eyes opened along with all of yours. Here, seen in this mirror darkly, this warped glass with a silver back. Here together, dwelling in the thickness of an atmosphere bedded in the sands of time. Here for you and yours and for me and mine to find how unique and how alike our stories are. I'd encourage you to look up Belden and Lucy's work on, on Facebook. This is my father, born in 1915, died in 1979 of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. He was uh, a physical therapist, uh, was a sailor before the Second World War, uh, and entered uh, the Royal Air Force. Uh, he was part of the uh, medical corps where he got medical training and then was a, uh, a physical therapist in Liverpool. Uh, and he met my mother and they married February 22nd, 1945. The final poem that you'll hear is uh, about the wedding. Uh, so couple of poems about him. Paint it black for my father. You and mom told me in the interstate restaurant you'd been diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. There'd been a biopsy without thinking, ignorant of the full meaning of the words. I asked when the autopsy would be. How stupid, how callous of me. I just returned from vacation in England where I'd stayed with Grandad and his new wife, Olive, the old man who would take your diagnosis in his stride. He would make it to 94, outlive all of his friends. Grandad, who was a prime reason for our emigration, he'd refuse to buy a car so you could visit your patients. And as a physical therapist, you wondered if you'd got the big C from leaning over the early diathermy machines, or during the war when the RAF sprayed the concert hut to delouse it. But you were also a cigarette smoker. And I think of the high power electricity lines where we lived, those neighbors who contracted cancer. As a medical man, you felt optimistic being enrolled in a government cancer research program but ultimately despaired that the feds were using you as a guinea pig and wept that everything was being taken away from you. You survived for five years, became thinner than ever, died age 64 at Easter, outside Phasidia, a blaze of yellow. And this next poem, which I consider one of my best poems, uh, was influenced by Sylvia Plath. There was a big snowstorm, uh, President's Day or Washington's birthday in 1979 when my father died. And uh, a lot of snow. Uh, the window of my father's beloved um, Volkswagen Beetle was broken, we believe, by some neighborhood kids. And um, the poem that I'm going to read, as I say, is uh, much under the influence of Sylvia Plath. Blizzard, the world is unruly with white. It seems doubtful if we'll ever find the road again. In the city, everyone is looting. The law of children reigns. They are running through the basilicas, 
kicking an old man in the street. His Roman nose is a bloody pulp. A two, a two, a two. Winter rages in our living room. The cancer cells in my father have been running wild all winter in his lung and in his blood. The seams of his pajamas cut into him like knives. In the shift my mother makes him, he resembles almighty Caesar. The physicians and the senators stand by and watch him fall, bend over him, listening with stethoscopes as he cops blood, A2, A2, A2. He's like a parcel of bones, waiting for the archaeologist's trowel, waiting for the looters, the grave robbers, to steal everything. There are too many knives. Every wound is fatal. The vast shoulder of snow heaves against the house. We can't open the door. We are sealed in this box forever. And this final one, as I said, is about my parents' wedding. St. Anne's Church, Egbert, Liverpool, February 22nd, 1945. Chucks away, chaps. Thinking of my mother passing at 2.30 a.m. this morning. I keep looking at the happy wedding photographs from 75 years ago. All those uniforms. Woolen Gray of the Royal Air Force. Dad, rakish sergeant in the RAF Medical Corps. Khaki jackets of my mum's fellow auxiliary territorial service pals. My mum's Joan Crawford plucked eyebrows. Dad pulled her into the seclusion of the limo. Thank you, everyone. Hmm. Well, thank you, Chris. And thank you for sharing also a, a favorite poem. And uh, lucky you to have that. <laughs> I wish I no, but it is, it's really great. It is a great piece of work and a great testament, sure. Well, thank you, thank you. And uh, tonight, okay, so again, I have Oksana, I have your poem, <laughs> and I'll put it on the share. Can you see it okay? It might be on uh, mute, Oksana. Uh, I don't write. I don't see her right now. Am I missing? Um, am I missing? Or she maybe she had, maybe she just had an internet an internet issue and is gone. I suspect she's, that is. The, she's there, but but not on video or muted. I don't see. I don't see her. I don't see her Hollywood Square. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me stop. Let me stop the share. See if. I Oh, there you are. Oh, yeah, Oksana, are you able to uh, to see in here? Oksana has the voice of a coloratura also when she sings. Uh, I must say, there's a beautiful singing voice. But I guess not. I guess, well, unfortunately. Well, anyway. So, actually, for me, you know, an hour, an hour and change of this kind of intense poetry from everybody and the level that of poems that are here, I'm fine. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I think there's a like like a symphony. You know, it's like a museum. You know, you go there for for an hour or two, and then you go home, because all you otherwise you might be looking, but you're not seeing, or seeing but not looking. You know, however you want to look at it. And I find the same with poetry. Where, you know, the focus is so intense in this particular group that wow, I, I just had a great time. And uh, I hope you all did as well and enjoyed all of our poetry as, as this is astounding. Uh, you know, Laura Lee and Chris Lynette, wonderful, Naima and Martin, and Lacan, thank you for staying up with us and all that. It's a great uh, session. Absolutely great. I can't wait to share it on thank YouTube you. and uh, with all of you. Okay. Uh, you said just... something to chat about Rox Roxanna's poem? Yeah, I have it, but uh, she's not here. I, I think she should perform it, you know. Okay. Yeah. Just a thought. Okay.